Hello. You're Lewis, I presume. You'll see. Things are quite different here. So, Jack, he usually, I think, the funniest man on the screen. But I dare say that this time you found your match. I finally met my match. You met your match. It's infuriating. <laughs> How is it? A new side to you, maybe? Yeah, it's always it's always great to sort of try something different or, you know, and I think when you're working with different people, you, you kind of, you, the dynamic will end, you know, just automatically end up being different. <laughs> what I loved about this movie, one of the things, is that it celebrates weirdness. Was that part of the appeal of doing this movie? That was definitely part of the appeal yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's the heart and soul of the movie. That's the message, if you will to celebrate your weirdness. Because you know, kids so often feel self-conscious and they just want to be normal. And they want to be just like all the other cool yeah. kids. Yeah. And, uh, and, and sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll hide their, their instincts to be original. And so, yeah, that's what I loved about this movie. It was like, don't, don't be ashamed of your differences and your, your quirks. Those are actually your secret powers. Yeah, it's your strength. Yeah. But it's also, it's kind of a feeling of a stranger in a strange land, right? Sometimes you feel like a, a fish out of water. Have mm. you ever experienced that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I always, I still feel like a fish out of water. You know, and I think it's, that's part of the, the joy of, I guess, of, of being able to work as, a, as an actor, is yeah. that you, you can not be yourself and you can be other people, because it's, sometimes being yourself is the, the hardest job of all. I don't want the creepy little runt. Think I want him? <laughs> Lucky shot. It took me also back to the time when I was a kid and I was afraid uh, from the monster under the bed. Yes. Right? Yeah, I don't know. My, I have a three year old and she's totally into the monster under the bed. I still mm -hmm. think that there's a monster <laughs> under the bed. I still wake up at like 3 a.m. I go and check on the kids and I lie there and I kind of think it's too embarrassing. No one's looking. I still. <laughs> You'll check to see. I do. I'm well, not gonna, I don't now. I'm, I want to check under the chair right now, but I'm, I'm not going to because well, the camera's it's, it's, you, I mean, I don't think there's a monster under there, but there could be like a spider. A creepy thing, yeah. Or a ferret or something. There could be. There no. could be a ferret under my chair. Now you put that thought in my head. Nope. All Anything clear. that still scares you, though? Like one of those magical creatures or a um, um, superstitious uh, thought about? Maybe just like a strange orange president creature under the bed. That could be in the White House? Dude, there could be a Trump under the bed. It could, could be. Terrifying. <laughs> there could be. The most terrifying Mythological creature, creature. I know. You're perfectly safe. That's safe? As long as it's fed. You have this amazing banter between you, and it's like a proper screwball comedy. How fun was it? Because. You know, for me, it was amazing to watch. Yeah, they've got, they've got a great history between one another. And, yeah. you know, tensions are pretty high because they're trying to find a, a doomsday clock that's going to eradicate all human beings. So there's a little bit of pressure. Yeah. And, but, you know, and so they take it out on one another. But I think at base, they're really good friends and they understand each other's weaknesses and strengths. You're right. The stakes are very high. We're talking about the end of the human race as we know it. It took you back to the movie that inspired you as a kid, E.T. perhaps, or you know, the, the Goonies. Were these the kind? I mean, I loved all of those films because there were genuine scares in there. There were genuine scares in you there, know, and, and children in peril. And then you had to, as a child, watching them, as a you know, an eight-year-old or a ten-year-old, you would have to think, can I? Could I survive this? And so you see the children leaping over genuine hurdles, which I think is. They're the movies that I prefer to take my kids to.